Thank you for coming. My name is Joshua Burgeon. I'm the general manager for the EC2 spot business inside of AWS. Also with me today is Zev Stolen from Get and DevOps. And we're going to talk to you about spot and how it can save you thousands. When you think about spot, spot is spare on-demand capacity. And when you think about spare capacity, I need you to think about the scale of AWS. We have over a million active customers in 190 countries. And an interesting stat we just published is that there are more people using more compute hours on EC2 spot now than they were using all of EC2 in 2012. So spot's a big deal. Using spot is actually very simple. It's a little bit different than on-demand and reserved instances, but not that much. Same underlying instances. The big difference, it's a market where the price changes based on supply and demand. And then you'll never pay more than your bid. So when the market exceeds your bid, you get two minutes. We give you a two-minute notification or a two-minute warning, and you get to wrap up your work. So when I talk about spot markets, the important thing to remember is there isn't just one single spot market. When you're looking at EC2 capacity, every single instance type, every size of that instance, every availability zone in every region is a different spot market. What that means is that we've never run out of spot capacity. We might run out of spot capacity in a single market, but we won't run out of it in all the markets and certainly not all at the same time. Another thing that some people kind of get tripped up around is this difference between the market price and the bid price. I mentioned this earlier that the price can fluctuate based on supply and demand. So the market price, this is our price history graph. It's available as an API, it's available as a graph. It's very simple. The, bid, the market price here, that's what you actually pay. You, you never pay your bid price unless the bid and the market price are the same. So here this market price is about 85% off the on-demand price. So how does that work in practice? Let's say I bid. 25% of the on-demand price. That's the maximum I want to pay. If I did that, I still only pay the market price. So if the market price is 90% off the on-demand price, I pay 90% off. I don't pay 75% of the on-demand price. But if I bid 25%, any time the price exceeded that, my instance got interrupted. So here you can see in this example, I bid 25%. I saved about 85% on average because it fluctuated a little bit. But I also got interrupted three or four times. That's the little uh, the uh, kind of green uh, line kind of interrupting the black line here. Let's say I bid 50% of the on-demand price. Well, the good news is I still paid the market price. So instead of saving maybe 86%, I saved 85% because there was only a very short period of time that the price moved all the way up. But I still got interrupted one time. This is over the course of a week, right? So interruptions aren't the kind of thing you're going to be facing on a minutely basis. So I'm going to take it further. I'm going to bid 75% of the on-demand price. And you might say, why would I do that? I don't, I don't want to pay 75%. Well, guess what? Typically, you're not going to. Bidding 75% of the on-demand price, in this example, and 50% of the on-demand price, you save the same exact amount of money over the course of a week. And by bidding 75% of the on-demand price, you didn't get interrupted once. So if you take away nothing else from this presentation, everybody like focus right now, right? Focus. Just bid the on-demand price. People get wrapped up around the axle and come up with super fancy predictive algorithms for trying to figure out what the spot price is. Don't do it. Bid on or around the on-demand price. You will typically save 80, 85%. You will avoid most of the interruptions, maybe not all of them and you won't have to be thinking about it. Don't spin up a spot market manipulation team. That won't work. So just do this. Uh, the good news is if you use our new console, this is the default. So I'm gonna go over a couple of example use cases and later we're gonna have Zev here from Get talk in much more depth about how they're using it, which is very exciting. You don't wanna hear from me, you wanna hear from a real life person who uses this for a living. So one example, using our partner uh, Spotinst here in Israel, uh, Interactive, which is a mobile ad exchange, which is processing content for over 450 million unique users a month, over you know, thousands of different mobile apps that are trying to monetize through ads. They're using spot instances. They're saving thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And for their total monthly AWS bill, this amounts to a 20 or 30% savings. So this customer has costs from S3, and maybe they're using EMR, and they're using other things, but they're saving a lot of money. If all of your costs were EC2, if the only thing you're using is EC2, then your savings are going to be 80 to 90% of your total monthly AWS bill. 
That's probably not the case for all of you, but I just want to give you an idea of what the savings are. Another example, really exciting one, uh, the Large Hadron Collider, which is one of the biggest scientific uh, consortiums and experiments in the world. They're processing uh, just a massive amount of data, right? Sort of a recording data every 25 nanoseconds, a petabyte of data per second. So they, uh, just, just for giggles, essentially, spun up a 58,000 core cluster using Spot to expand their fixed on-premises grid. And because scientists are competitive, another set of researchers working on this uh, similar set of data spun up a 118,000 core cluster using Spot instances. The great thing is they didn't have to ask us in advance. They just kind of followed our advice and our public documentation. They walked out of a room like this and they went and did it. You don't have to go ask the IT person. You don't have to spin up a big new data center. You don't have to justify it. You can run a 10,000 core data center for about 100 bucks an hour. So that's a pretty good deal. One cent a core hour and no advance notice, no planning. That's the kind of thing I can get behind. Uh, for those of you who've been using Spot a while, you might be familiar with everything I just said, so I'm sorry. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention, we've been innovating a lot on Spot. We've released four really big things in the last year, including one in the last week. The Spot Bid Advisor, Spot Fleet, Spot Blocks, and the brand new Spot Console. It's been in beta for a while, and we just publicly released it this week. So I'm going to go over those. The Spot Bid Advisor is a web-based tool, and there's also a script. It lets you explore all of the spot markets that I just talked about and kind of put in an experimental bid and see what your chance of being interrupted would be. Uh, very simply, you put in your bid. In this case, I bid 50% of the on-demand price because I don't pay attention to my own advice. And what I see here, you see these green things? What that indicates is that in all of these spot markets, not once in a week and not once in a month did I get interrupted bidding 50% of the on-demand price. So this is a really easy way. You can use the console. You can use this Python script if this is the way you like to, to roll. And this tells you how many hours for, uh, on average did these instances live over the last week. Again, this is not a guarantee that your instance will never be interrupted. Uh, please don't run your database on spot. I will hunt you down. Uh, actually, I just won't answer your support call. So Spot Fleet, this is another big innovation. We heard from a lot of customers, like I mentioned, 58,000 cores. Uh, Disney did a 36,000 core workload, 118,000 cores. That's a lot of management overhead if you're kind of uh, asking for all these Spot instances individually. So we released Spot Fleet, which is a management layer that allows you to request one, two, three, five, 10,000 Spot instances in a single call. It allows you to work with heterogeneous instances, so you can request as many instance types as you can work with different sizes, different families, different availability zones, same availability zone. You can tell us to find you the best price. So you can say, I can work in 20 spot markets, but just find me the best one. Or you can say, I I'd like an index fund. I want you to diversify all of my investments across 50 spot pools because I don't want to lose any more than 1 50th of my spot fleet at any one time. And you can also apply custom weighting. So if you're working with all these different instance types, you might say a C3 8XL is worth eight times as much as a C3 XL because it's got eight times as many cores. Or maybe you scale on memory. Or maybe you've got a custom unit for your workload. No matter what you want, you can just input these weighting and this prioritization and we will do it for you. Since we've released Spot Fleet about a year ago, we keep releasing innovations. You can see all these things here. Uh, this slide is essentially obsolete the minute I print it. Uh, we just released something called one-time fleets. Let's say you want us to just create the fleet for you, but then you will manage all of the instances and tearing them down. We can do that for you. So basically, we keep innovating on Spot Fleet, making it easier for you to use Spot, less work for you to think about how Spot markets work, and you can kind of probably stay in the business that you're actually in. Super easy to get started with Spot Fleet. I hope you're taking notes. Right? You just fire up the console, type in this giant JSON blob. No, totally kidding. Use the console. Uh, this is the easiest way to get started. Even if you're the hardcore API guy, you, you, know, you don't like Emacs even, right? You just, everything from the command line, it's all VI. Fire up the console. Uh, this will actually spit out that JSON blob that I mentioned, and then you can copy it and your life will be easier. So this console, these are brand new screenshots as of this week. You can launch, as I mentioned, kind of a one-time spot fleet or just like a classic spot instance that doesn't renew automatically if it gets interrupted. You can have us request and maintain that capacity for you. That's what a spot fleet is. We'll automatically replenish it if the instances go down. And then you can also request something that we call a spot block. 
These are spot instances that are guaranteed to run for between one and six hours of duration that you specify. So if you have essentially non-interruptible workloads that are short-term duration, you can run them on spot. That's something that's just never been possible before, unless you were kind of willing to chance it. So very simply, all of these things that I've mentioned earlier, which is the allocation strategy, the different instance types, uh, the availability zone, one more different ones, whatever you're willing to work in, and then the maximum price, this is really easy. We even have a dashboard, customizable, filterable. Uh, if you use it and you don't see something that you're looking for, please let us know. We can iterate on this you know, relatively quickly. And then spot blocks, like I mentioned before. So here, you uh, save a little bit less than your traditional spot instance, but you get that kind of added protection where they're guaranteed to run for the length of time that you specify. There's not guaranteed to be capacity, just like spot, it's still spare on-demand capacity. But this is a single additional parameter. If you're already using spot instances now, you just pass in this additional parameter on the API and off you go. So how does this actually work in real life? I'm just gonna go through a couple of workloads. Uh, uh, oftentimes there's a misconception that spot is only for non-production workloads or it's only for Hadoop and big data. We're actually seeing people using spot all over the place and Get's going to talk about this. The, the two uh, typical use cases that I've kind of come up with here are Hadoop and stateless applications. For example, a web tier, that's what Get's gonna talk about. We also see a lot of spot instance use in dev test workloads. We just released a Jenkins plugin that's available uh, publicly. So feel free to download that and start saving a lot of money. Real briefly, uh, for those of you who are already operating in the cloud, nothing on this slide should be new. So to use EC2, kind of our best practice, right? Build your applications to be as stateless as possible. Make them fault tolerant. Even if you're not using spot instances, it's possible that the hardware can degrade, things can happen. Uh, use multiple AZs. Uh, this isn't applicable for every kind of workload, right? But you get the best availability, the best performance for your customers. And then make things loosely coupled. Good separation of concerns, service-oriented architecture. This is not new. So the big news is if you've done all of this work and your applications are working really well in EC2, the only thing you need to do to take advantage of spot instances, instance flexibility. As I mentioned earlier, every different size, every different instance, every different availability zone in every region is a different spot instance. So if you can use C3s, but you could also use C4s, R4s, M4s of a similar size, maybe you wouldn't consider that with on-demand because of the price differential, but again, remember with spot, it's 90% off the on-demand price. So you could have an instance that's twice as much as you would normally be willing to pay, and it's actually less expensive on spot than your preferred on-demand instance. So how does this work with Hadoop? Lots of people may already be using this. Uh, this is just your kind of traditional Hadoop architecture. You've got your uh, core nodes with task tracker and data node. When you want to scale up, you just add more core nodes. Since they're also running HDFS, it's a little bit difficult to scale them down because you might experience data corruption. So the simplest way to be able to use spot, this is exactly what EMR does. You separate your core nodes and your task nodes. Task nodes don't run HDFS. There's no danger, essentially, if they die, they can be restarted. So uh, one of the cool things, again, about Hadoop is with the introduction of Yarn, you can use the heterogeneous instances, that thing that I just talked about. Some instances will be more performant than others, but basically you can use a really wide variety of instances to get your work done. Uh, so how does this work in practice? Again, these tools that I'm talking about, you'll see a little bit of repeat here. You're gonna go to the bid advisor. You're gonna find the region that you're operating in. You're gonna kind of look at the different instance pools you might wanna operate in. So you can definitely be flexible within family. If you can use a C3XL, if your workload will run in that size, you can use a 2XL, a 4XL, an 8XL. Like I said, you might not be willing to pay for that difference at the on-demand price, but you can run into situations here, right, where a 2XL and a 4XL are less expensive than an XL. So I mean, this is just money you're leaving on the table. The other cool thing, like I mentioned, is you can work across family. Maybe the R family or the M M3 family or the M4 or the C4. These aren't the things that you might optimize around when you're paying on-demand prices, but for spot, this is capacity that can get your work done faster, and you might as well use it. I mentioned this before, but with Hadoop, you're not gonna work across availability zones. For the most cost-effective cluster, you don't wanna be passing a lot of uh, data back and forth between the map and reduce phases across availability zones. Uh, you can do that if you want, it's just not the most cost-effective thing. 
nothing's going to actually break. So, but again, with what I picked here, I've got one, two, three, four, I got eight different spot instance pools. That's a lot of different capacity. I've weighted them based on cores because that's how I scale here in my Hadoop application. I'm going to click this button if I want to. If I prefer to launch things from the command line, you can also just click the launch button and we create the spot fleet for you. Very simple. How does this look in real life? So remember, I selected these eight different pools. We're in one availability zone. I requested 1,000 cores. Over 30 days, and this is not a simulation, this is one we actually ran, we never lost more than 16% of the capacity. More importantly, we maintained the average 99% of the time. And even in that instance where we lost the 16% of the capacity, we replenished it with those other pools. More importantly, we saved over 81%. So we bid the on-demand price, we saved 81%. We didn't spend a lot of time working on this. Probably spend more time in this presentation than you would setting up your spot fleet. At least I hope so. So how do you deal with instance terminations? I've mentioned them a few times. I don't want you to be scared. Uh, I hope you're not. So you get a two-minute warning. This is done uh, on the instance metadata right now. Later in the year, we're looking at SNS-based notifications. But it's really simple to build a script that checks for the two-minute notification and kind of wraps up your work. This is an example. You check for the two-minute notification. You run some shutdown scripts. Otherwise, you don't do anything. Really not that big of a deal. So what else can we do with Spot and Hadoop? If your cluster lives less than six hours, you can run the core nodes, the nodes where you really don't want them to go down because you might experience data corruption. You can run those on spot blocks. And there you're saving 30 to 50% off the on-demand price. So still big savings to be had, even if you can't run on instances that might be interrupted. If you're not familiar with EMR and EMRFS, this is another option to save money and not have to worry about scaling HDFS. So uh, EMR and Spot are pretty tightly integrated, and we're working on improving that all the time. But you can also do this even if you're not running EMR, if you're running Hadoop yourself or Spark or anything in that, that vein. Takeaways, run your task nodes separately, use Spot Fleet, Spot Blocks for your short-lived clusters, save money, scale, accelerate results, time is money, that kind of thing. Uh, so web applications with Spot. I'm going to kind of try and fly through this so I make sure that uh, Zev has time. So web application typically looks like this. You've got your load, but you got your customers, hopefully, out in front. You've got your load balancer. And then you have essentially your fleet of stateless front end servers and then some kind of back end. Maybe you've got a second tier with an application layer. Somewhere in the back end, you've got DynamoDB, you've got S3, you've got some someplace storing your session data. So I'm here to talk about this part in the middle, not here to talk about Dynamo. So you're going to select multiple spot instances, multiple availability zones. This is actually a best practice with on-demand as well. And then for best performance behind an ELB, you're going to select instances with similar performance characteristics across different families. You don't actually, uh, this isn't totally required, but the ELB can sometimes experience uh, strange pooling behavior if you have really large and really small instances. So we recommend this. Again, you go back to the bid advisor. You don't have to keep doing this every time you launch a fleet, but this is just a good way to get familiar. You're not going to be flexible within the family. I mentioned this before, but you are flexible across families, right? So if you're using a C3, you can use a C4, an M4, an R3, lots of different choices. And again, you're going to actually want to be flexible across zones. This isn't just a spot thing. This is how you provide the best availability to your customers for a web application no matter what. So you review your JSON config if you, if you choose, or you just click Launch, off you go. Now, the coolest thing about this is something that I like to call over-provisioning. Let's say I requested 50 instances for 30 days. If I needed 50, I had it most of the time, 99% of the time. I never dropped below 45 instances. That's pretty good, right? I never lost more than 10% of my capacity. I saved 85%. Pretty good, right? What if I only wanted uh, 45, right? I really needed 45, so I over-provisioned. I, I added five more. Well, guess what? Not once in this entire 30 days did I ever drop below my desired capacity, and I still saved 83%. So I want you guys to take this a step further. I want you to way over-provision. I want you to provision, I don't want you to waste money, but I want you to provision in advance 
of your scale. I want you to think, what kind of experience could all of my visitors to my web app ex get if I had twice as much capacity during normal times, and then when my peaks happen, I don't actually have to do anything, I'm already scaled. So this is something that's really interesting. A long time ago, Amazon.com, the retailer, you may have heard of them, uh, they did a study that basically said a uh, you know, certain number of milliseconds of latency can uh, you know, drop revenue by a billion dollars over a year. Right? The added latency means that people kind of abandon the shopping cart or abandon the website. But the, but the math means that it's, of course, not worth it to kind of infinitely scale your website because, you know, a billion dollars is money, but it's not an infinite amount of money. What if that was only, you know, a hundred million dollars in infrastructure? So you can, under normal circumstances, scale to where you would normally only scale during your peak loads and then not only give everybody a better performance all the time, still save money and not have to do anything when you scale. So you don't have to kind of worry I'm going to scale too late for the load. I'm going to have a period where there's high latency. So this is really powerful and super counterintuitive if you're used to on-demand. This isn't something you would do. Uh, very excited by this, and it's an emerging use pattern. ELB, very simple. It's the same thing you're going to be doing with on-demand. Cross-zonal load balancing. Again, otherwise you're not going to get the benefits, especially if there's more capacity in one zone than another for spot. And then also connection draining with a timeout of 90 seconds. Remember when I mentioned the two-minute warning? So a two-minute warning may not seem like a lot, but if you're talking about a stateless application that serves its requests in milliseconds, that is essentially infinity. How does that work? You're going to check that instance termination notification again every five seconds. You're going to detach from the ELB. The connections are going to drain. Remember, you're over-provisioning. Your spot instance that's not being terminated is already there. The ELB directs connections to the new instance. Literally, nobody has noticed. So I actually don't know why everybody's not doing this. I think we just don't do a good job marketing it. But this is a super genius way of kind of saving a lot of money and scaling for peak. And really, your customers don't even notice. You don't even have to build an application architecture around dealing with two minutes because your requests are served up in milliseconds. If you're using auto scaling, it's a little bit different than Spot Fleet. Uh, you're going to find the single instance type you work with. They don't work with multiple instance types. And then you're basically going to create two different auto-scaling groups. The only real difference is you click request spot instances, and then you put in a bid price for the spot group. You put them behind the same load balancer. Otherwise, everything basically works the same way. As you can see here, the only difference is I have an on-demand auto-scaling group and a spot auto-scaling group. Slightly different than spot fleet, but same idea. Lots of people use this pattern as well. Uh, and with that, uh, I think the timing is good. I'm going to pass it over to Zev Stolen here, who's uh, probably the reason or the, the method by which I got here today. טוב, אז רובם מכירים את גט, אני מאמין, נכון? בארץ זה מאוד פשוט, כולם מכירים. נכון, מכירים? אחלה. אז אני אספר קצת על מה אנחנו עושים, ואיך אנחנו עושים, ולמה אנחנו משתמשים בספוט, ואיך הגענו לזה בכלל. אז... כמו שאתם מכירים, גט היא חברה שנותנת פתרונות לתחבורה, okay, אם זה תחבורה של אנשים, אם זה משלוחים, שליחויות ודברים כאלה. אנחנו החברה הכי גדולה של on-demand transportation ב-Middle East ו-Europe. כמו שאתם רואים, יש לנו מלא אנשים שעובדים איתנו. Uh, אנחנו פרוסים ב-60 ערים uh, בעולם, uh, רוב העבודה שלנו היא ברוסיה, uh, UK וישראל, יש לנו גם uh, סניף בניו יורק, אמנם סניף די קטן אבל גודל מהר מאוד. אוקיי, uh, okay, אז uh, קצת נתונים על ישראל, אנחנו... הנתונים פה קצת uh, לדעתי משקרים, אנחנו קרובים ל-100 אלף נסיעות ביום, uh, יש לנו בסביבות עשרת אלפים uh, uh, מוניות ונהגים, uh, יש לנו uh, מיליון וחצי יוזרים שמשתמשים באפליקציה ובשירות שלנו. Uh, באירופה, כמו שאמרתי, אנחנו פרוסים uh, ב-60 ערים, שזה גם ברוסיה וגם באנגליה. בישראל אנחנו פרוסים בכל המדינה. 
בארצות הברית בינתיים יש לנו סניף רק בניו יורק, כי רוב המרקט זה שם. אנחנו נותנים פתרונות גם לעסקים, אם זה הסעות של העובדים לעבודה, פיזור, אם זה שליחויות של מעטפה עם צ'ק ודברים כאלה, יש פתרונות גם. ולמרות שאנחנו נתפסים כחברת מוניות ו... וזה, אנחנו חברה טכנולוגית בסופו של דבר שמתבססת על טכנולוגיה חדישה. אנחנו משקיעים הרבה מאוד מאמץ גם בכסף וגם בעבודה בשביל לייעל את, ה... את העבודה שלנו. אז בואו קצת נספר לכם על ה... על איך אנחנו עושים מאחורי הקלעים, מאחורי האפליקציה הקטנה הזאת שנותנת להזמין מונית. אז הבסיס שלנו, של האפליקציה, בנויה על אפליקציה מונוליטית אחת גדולה לכל מדינה, ששם מתבצעים רוב החישובים באותה אפליקציה, ויש עוד כ-30 סרוויסים שנותנים שירות לאותן אפליקציות בכל מדינה. אז בפרודקשן, אם אנחנו מדברים על ה-Compute Instances, יש לנו בסביבות 300-400, בפיקים זה יכול להגיע גם ל-500 אינסטנסים, שכמו שאתם מבינים, ב-On-Demand זה הרבה מאוד כסף. כל מכונה יכולה לעלות חצי דולר לשעה, יכולה לעלות דולר לשעה, וזה המון כסף. וכמובן בשביל לתחזק את המערכת הזאת אנחנו צריכים הרבה מאוד אה, סביבות סטייג'ינג ופיתוח וסביבות BI בשביל לספק אה, גם בדיקות וגם דיבלופמנט של אה, אותם שירותים. אז אה, כמו שאמרנו הרבה מאוד כסף הולך על, ה, על ה-Compute Instances בשביל לתחזק את כל הגדילה הזאת שאנחנו אה, חווים אז מה שהגענו לפתרון של ה-spot instances, מה בעצם אנחנו עושים? לכל סרוויס אנחנו משאירים שלושה שרתים שהם on demand, okay, אני לא, אנחנו לא משתמשים במה שג'ושו אמר, I'm just telling that uh, your advice is, we are not using it, <laughs> we're not using uh, uh, on demand price. Uh, אנחנו, uh, בדרך כלל משתמשים לוקחים מחיר השוק של הספוטים, אנחנו מוסיפים 30-40 אחוז אובר וזה מה שאנחנו נותנים בביד. ולמה זה? הארכיטקטורה שלנו בנויה על לפחות שלושה שרתים on demand, שבגלל שאנחנו ב-region שיש לו שלוש availability zones, אז אנחנו משאירים בכל זון שרת on demand, שאנחנו בטוחים שהוא יעבוד והוא יהיה בסדר. ושאר המכונות אנחנו ממלאים בספוט. עכשיו, איך אנחנו ממלאים? גם פה יש איזושהי לוגיקה מאוד חשובה. אנחנו תמיד מעלים באוטוסקיילינג נפרד, ספוטים ואון דמנד. וגם ההתנהגות היא שונה לגמרי. את הספוטים אנחנו רוצים להעלות כמה שיותר מהר, אוקיי? ולהוריד כמה שיותר לאט. ואון דמנד אנחנו רוצים להפך. לעלות לאט מאוד ולהוריד מהר, זה עולה הרבה כסף. אז מה אנחנו עושים? אנחנו בודקים CPU בקלאסטר למשל, ואומרים שאם אנחנו מגיעים ל-50% CPU בקלאסטר, בואו, אנחנו נעלה שרת ספוט אחד, אין בעיה, הוא זול, גם לוקח זמן עד שהוא נכנס לפעולה, לוקח כמה דקות לפעמים כי זה בידינג. עד שהביד עובר, עד שמוצאים לנו אינסטנס, לוקח בערך, עד שתי דקות בערך זה יכול לקחת עד שנותנים לנו ספוט אינסטנס, אז ב-50% CPU אני מעלה מכונה. אם אני רואה שהדברים לא מתקדמים והגעתי כבר ל-60-65% CPU, אני מעלה עוד שתי מכונות, כי זה זול. אם אני רואה שהמצב מחמיר ואני הגעתי כבר ל-80% CPU, אני מעלה מכונה אחת של on demand, היא גם עולה מהר, אמנם עולה הרבה כסף, אבל לא אכפת לי, אני צריך להיות למעלה. אוקיי, הגענו לפיק, עברנו את הפיק, ה-CPU מתחיל לרדת, קודם כל אני ארצה להוריד את ה-On-Demand, כי הוא יקר לי. 
אז ב-70% CPU אני מוריד on demand אחד, את זה שהעליתי ב-80% לפני זה, ואז אני מוריד שרת ספוט אחד ב-65, וב-40 אני מוריד שרת אחרון שהעליתי בספוט, אוקיי? אז בגלל שעברנו לספוטים אנחנו חוסכים בערך 65% מה... מהמחיר שלנו, כ-70% מהשרתים הם בספוט, אוקיי? Okay, הספוט פרייס הוא בערך בין 10% ל-20% מהמחיר ה-on demand. אוקיי, okay, קצת חישובים, אם אנחנו מדברים על ה-30 סרוויסים בערך שיש לנו בפרודקשן, 90, 90 שרתים אנחנו משאירים ב-on demand, בערך חצי מיליון דולר אנחנו חסכנו רק בזה. אוקיי? Okay, בשנה. כמובן, כמו שאמרתי, אנחנו uh, צריכים הרבה מאוד uh, staging environments uh, בשביל לבדוק את הדברים ש- לפני שהם הולכים לפרודקשן לעשות development. כל האינסטנסים שלנו ב-staging environment הם ספוטים, כולם. אנחנו משתמשים בספוט רקווסט עם uh, fulfillment, שזה אומר שאם השרת נופל, ברגע שיש capacity זמין, הוא יעלה את אותו השרת בחזרה. זאת אומרת, לא אותו השרת, אבל אותו סוג שרת בחזרה, ואז מקסימום יש לנו interruption של העבודה של הסטייג'ינג בכמה דקות, ואנחנו חזרה למעלה. גם טיפה חישובים, יש לנו 15 סביבות סטייג'ינג, שבכל אחד יש בין 20 ל-30 שרתים. כמו שאתם רואים, אנחנו... חוסכים פה בערך גם חצי מיליון דולר בשנה, יפה מאוד. אז זאת הסיבה שאנחנו משתמשים בספוטים. כמובן, אנחנו משתמשים בכלים של האורכיסטרציה, כלים מאוד יפים של טרפורם למשל, שבשורת קוד אחד אתה הופך את השרתים שלך מ-on demand לספוט, אתה פשוט רושם את הספוט פרייס שמה, ו... אתה מריץ את זה וכל השרתים שלך נהיים ספוטים. בפרודקשן אנחנו גם משתמשים בטרפורם לבלו גרין דיפלוימנט, גם יש לנו צי של השרתים שהם on demand וגם של הספוט. Okay? אם תרצו לדעת על זה יותר, אתם מוזמנים לבוא לעבוד אצלנו, אנחנו מגייסים. זהו, שאלות? ג'ושה, אני מדייק אותך? So real quickly here, just wrapping it all up. Thank you very much, Zev. Uh, this is a super exciting use case. We were really happy to have him up here and talking. Uh, we just love when our customers are able to talk publicly about what they're doing. I think it makes it that much more real. So I want to kind of wrap this all up for you. I know it's kind of a lot to pack into a single presentation. This is what spot and uh, reserved instances and on-demand are going to look like. inside your organization. You're not going to use all spot. I'm the GM of spot. I would love for you to use lots of spot. You're not going to use all spot for everything. Depending on the kind of workload you have, you might have a data science workload where you make really heavy use of spot and really light use of reserved instances because you can't plan very far in advance. You might have internal IT workloads. If you're going all in on Amazon and you're running your back office functions, these aren't interruptible. You're not going to run them on spot. You're also not really going to run them on, on on-demand servers either. It's much more cost-effective to use reserved instances and plan ahead. You might have somebody really smart, like Zev here, building a new application. They're just going to fire up an on-demand instance. They don't want to kind of deal with interruptions. They don't want to plan in advance and buy an RI. But you see what happens here in the corner? Zev builds this new application, gets really popular. His bill shoots through the roof. You can't see it on this graph, but the next day his boss comes in and says, what are you doing? Why are you not using Spot? Why can't we buy an RI? So you got to watch out for this. And then the last one is test and development. Again, we see really heavy use of Spot here. These are, these are test and development servers. You can run a much higher number of tests. You can run more staging environments. If the build breaks, you can fire up a Spot block for your developer. Give them three, four, five, six hours to figure it out. You know, kind of a, a clock that's ticking so they, they get to work. Uh, it won't look exactly like this for you, but this gives you an idea that every workload you have can use spot in some amount. What's coming soon? So all the stuff that we've been talking about is something you can already do. You can leave this room. If you've got a laptop, you can do it in this room. 
what's coming soon? We continue to innovate. So one of the things that's coming very soon in the next month is support for CloudTrail events for launch and terminations. If you use kind of CloudTrail to monitor what's been happening with your EC2 fleet, we're going to support it inside of Spot and Spot Fleet as well. If you are uh, in the life sciences business and you're subject to the American HIPAA regulations, which are about uh, data privacy, we're going to support dedicated instances. And this means dedicated tenancy. Uh, this may not apply to the people in this room, but it's something that we've been asked for a lot uh, in the genomics and life sciences business. Also, some banking sectors consider themselves subject to the HIPAA requirements, even though they're not technically. As well, uh, if anybody's using ECS, we're, we're very excited about the emergence of containers. Whether you're using ECS or not, these are kind of a perfect fit for Spot, especially with live migration support. So uh, in the next quarter, we're going to introduce automatic scaling for ECS clusters based on CloudWatch metrics. So you're going to be able to set up a Spot fleet, uh, kind of deploy your cluster, uh, your tasks into that, and then automatically scale based on the definitions of the metrics that you create inside of the ECS console. We think that's very exciting, and we're going to continue to invest a lot in the integration between Spot and ECS because there's a real natural fit behind containers, which are very small, very instance flexible, and this notion of Spot fleet, where you just ask for a bundle of resources. Uh, I only want you to do a couple of things. I want you to fire up the bid advisor. I've said that before. You can use the Python script, too. It's in our public GitHub. It's called spotlabs.py. You can fire up the Spot console. I've mentioned this as well. Super easy way to get started, kind of explore what's going on out there. And then you can use Spot Blocks. If you're already using Spot and there's some workloads you haven't been sure that you can use on Spot, this is a great way to get started. A lot of enterprise companies are exploring this if they don't have cloud-friendly workloads, if they're not stateless. That's really all there is to it. I wanted to thank everybody for coming here today. I flew halfway around the world to see you guys. Uh, and again, I wanted to thank Zev Stolen from Get. Please don't forget to give feedback on the session. I think you guys have heard this a thousand times, but we really do take the feedback seriously. We want to make sure that these are the kind of sessions you want to see. Uh, I think the other people are starting to file in, but I will move over here to answer questions while the next people get set up. Thank you.